Well, folks, we were the first on the scene telling you that the Mandalorian movie was likely to be delayed based on what we were looking at with production notes and all of that. Guess what? It turns out our sources were on the money again. The Mandalorian pushed back another year, and the Ray movie, nowhere to be seen. Hello folks, welcome back to the Pro Channel. We, as always, love having you here with us because we are on a journey. A journey to explain entertainment and keep you ahead of the culture curve. We've been doing just that. Breaking the news that The Mandalorian would be delayed. An exclusive scoop right here that now is confirmified. And guess what? Uh, Derek, the DA, rejoins us to talk all about it. Derek, welcome back to the channel. Thank you, Pro. Glad to be here. Boy, uh, another problem with Lucasfilm, huh? You could have knocked me over with a feather. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have ever thought it? Yes, let's get to the story right now. <laughs> this out of discussing film, uh, The Mandalorian and Grogu will now release on May 22nd, 2026. That, of course, is not when it was originally supposed to be released, which was going to be in 2025. So delayed yet again. Even that was a delay. But that's not all, folks. Going now to Scott Gustin uh, over on X. He says, here's a look at the updated Disney film release calendar as of April 5th, 2024. So just a few days ago. And uh, we're going to notice some things here. So let me go through these, uh, through these with you, Derek. Uh, yep. For 2024, we've got The First Omen, then Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, Young Woman and the Sea. I don't see that doing well. Inside Out 2, Kinds of Kindness, Deadpool and Wolverine, Alien Romulus, A Real Pain, Moana 2, Night Blank, Mufasa the Lion King. <laughs> uh, yeah, The list of Disney movies has changed since Walt ran the place. Oh, man. Going yeah, to 2025. Man. Of course, no Star Wars on there. None, nada, no Star Wars. Going to 2026. What do we have? Untitled Disney, Untitled Marvel, Untitled Pixar, Untitled Disney, yada, 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 until you get all the way now to... The Mandalorian and Grogu on May 22nd, 2026. But Derek, here's the big news for this video today. Folks, we're entering into rumor and speculation territory. Check the track record and uh, decide whether you want to believe this or not. Derek, I've talked with some sources, uh, some who know this stuff very well, some who are speculating, but I'm leaning towards the, one who's, the ones who I think have some insight here. Um, they're looking at this and saying, that now that the Mandalorian Grogu has been moved to 2026, that the other Star Wars movie that is scheduled, an untitled Star Wars store, uh, uh, movie that is scheduled for December 18th, 2026, that that likely is, is a placeholder which will not be there, which shall be short-lived. They believe that that will be replaced by some other Disney movie because they don't think, and I don't think as well, I'll say this, but they don't think that Disney is going to return to Star Wars with two films in the same year. They also don't know of anything that could possibly be ready other than the Ray movie. And the Ray movie is nowhere close to starting production. So what they're saying to me is that we need to go down to 2027, Derek. And in 2027, for December 17th in 2027, there's an untitled Star Wars. Yep. And what they're telling me is that at the best now, at the best, that would be where the Ray movie goes. They have, they have very little belief at all that we're going to get two Star Wars movies in 2026. They say the likelihood of that is just about zero. So it's looking very much now like the Ray movie, if it happens, is going to happen all the way in 2027, three and a half years from now. Uh, Derek, your thoughts on that? Maybe Daisy Ridley's going to age out of playing. Uh, Ray, 15 years from the sequel to, I don't, this is, I'm, Derek, it, go it's ahead. It's hard to imagine what, um, what's going to happen going forward with Star Wars, because this is what Star Wars has become now. This is what Lucasfilm is, just a comedy of errors. We're going to start a project, and then we'll quietly let that project disappear, and no one will talk about it ever again. That's basically what Star Wars has become now. Uh, Kathleen Kennedy has just ran that ship into the into the rocky shores of nowhere's land. I don't know what's going to happen with uh, the Ray movie, but I can tell you, just pushing back Mando and Grogu, 
That to me is a big sign that things aren't working well. That should have been something they could have turned around real quick. They already had the scripts ready for Mando season four. All they had to do is just repurpose that into a film, shoot it, get it out. They should have easily been able to get that out by December of 2025. So the fact that they couldn't do that, that's a big red flag. Now, right, let's, there let's is talk news about, about real, real quick, Dare. Real yeah, quick. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, okay. So, and I hate that I interrupted you because I could tell you were going, but here's my <laughs> thought for you. If, if they're pushing Mando now, and they are, to 2026, I don't, the kids who started watching The Mandalorian and cared about Baby Grogu, they're, they're going to be teenagers. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a big problem right now. That's a that's a major problem that not just Lucasfilm has, but Hollywood has. They're getting people out of the habit of going to the movies, all right, to see a Star Wars film or to enjoy Star Wars, period. You know, people are getting out of the movie going habit. People are getting out of the Star Wars habit with Lucasfilm. All the content that we're getting is terrible. The next thing up is the Acolyte. After that, it's going to be kids in space or whatever, the, you know, the skeleton crew. Nobody cares about any of this stuff. Meanwhile, Star Wars hasn't been in theaters since, what, 2019? All right, by the time this film drops, The Mandalorian and Grogu, that's going to be seven years. People have completely checked out of this franchise. And if you have everybody checking into other franchises or finding other things to do with their entertainment dollar, who's returning to Star Wars? You know, they've chased off all the Star Wars fans that might have enjoyed Star Wars. You know, the the hardcore guys that loved it from the 70s and the 80s. They chased those people away and they've replaced them with nobody. You know, the people that have, you know, were rocking with the sequel trilogy. Those people have checked out, too. You know, and now they've destroyed the Mandalorian They're They've oversaturated, you know, or overexposed Pedro Pascal. That guy's showing up in every movie, every television show imaginable. So people are getting tired of him. I mean, everything that you can think of when it comes to this project, the Mandalorian and Grogu and the fact that they've had to bump it back. It's just it's just nothing but red flags all over the place. So right now, in my opinion, I don't think that thing is going to do very well. But you, at least you can say it's coming. It's coming out. All right. So that's more than I can say for the Ray movie. I don't think the Ray movie's coming out at all, pro. I don't think that movie's going to hit the light of day. You know, I have more confidence with the James Mangold film dropping in 2027 than I have for that Ray movie. So I, you know, we announced exclusively here on the channel that the Ray movie was what Lucasfilm was going to do. It's not mm -hmm. going to change the accuracy of that report if they attempt it and fail and can't even get it out the door. Yeah. At this point, you know. It, gosh, the embarrassment, the humiliation that it's going to be. But it, it, here's where we are. I want to show you this. And, and uh, you know, this is not the typical place we go to grab news. Parade.com. Uh, not okay. the spot. But, uh, Derek, this is where we have to go to find Ray movie news now. Because nobody is covering it. This came out on the 5th. Daisy Ridley's new Star Wars movie, Everything We Know So Far. And I, I want to show you how humiliating, how embarrassing, how lackluster, this is, it, I can't even believe that they're printing this. Well, they're not printing it, but you get the idea. Michael Patrick, the author here, it says movie audiences will get another chance to travel to a galaxy far, far away, and they won't have to wait for too long to do it. Uh, you really? Well, yes, they will. <laughs> <laughs> oh, While yes, Disney's they announcement will. <laughs> for a, of a new Star Wars movie for 2026 initially made fans think that Ridley's Ray would be returning then, it has since been announced that a spinoff film of The Mandalorian will be taking the 2026 slot with the Daisy Ridley project coming on a later date. Yeah, that's that's at least three and a half years away then. Three maybe and a half, four, yeah. Maybe four, maybe five. I, I mean, we have different definitions, clearly, than this author when it comes to not waiting too long. So here, let's get into the details. You're going to love this, Derek. When mm -hmm. is Daisy Ridley's Star Wars movie being released? It says it would make sense that the Ray movie wouldn't hit theaters until 2027. Where yep. can I watch this, the new Star Wars movie? It would be highly unlikely that any future Star Wars movie wouldn't play in theaters. However, <laughs> since Disney owns Star Wars, upcoming films will most likely stream on Disney+. Plus. We don't even know if it's going to be a theatrical release. Who's in the new Star Wars movie cast? Aside from Daisy Ridley, no other actors have been announced. What is the plot of the new Star Wars movie? Disney and Lucasfilm have not released any official plot synopsis. Will the new Star Wars movie be at the start of a new trilogy? Traditionally, the Star Wars franchise has used a trilogy format. However, Disney has released standalone Star Wars movies in the past. And it is not known if Disney's Daisy Ridley movie will be the Star of a new trilogy. Who will Daisy Ridley play? Hey, we've got an answer for this one. <laughs> it's Ray. <laughs> is Daisy Ridley's character a Jedi? We've got an answer, probably. Who are the villains? Disney has not confirmed who the villains are. 
What other Star Wars movies are in production? This is where it gets to The Mandalorian Grogu. Untitled Dave Filoni movie. Untitled James Mangold movie. Untitled Taika Waititi movie. Lando, never coming out. Rogue Squadron by Patty Jenkins, maybe in a decade. Untitled Sean Levy movie. Untitled Ryan Johnson movie that he'll be talking about in the nursing home <laughs> one day. This is the wow. most embarrassing article in the history of Star Wars articles. But this, I Derek, mean, this is literally where we are. Bro, Star Wars. What? This is Star Wars now. This is Star what Star Wars, Wars has become. They have the Mandalorian and Grogu, which has been pushed back. And yeah. that's it. There's there's nothing else. They're they're talking about Force Foo in the Acolyte. Yeah. Force Foo, yeah. Derek. I saw that. Yep, I saw so, that. <laughs> so Derek, if you're if you're trying to talk to uh, shareholders for Disney and say, guys, you're not assessing the situation correctly, maybe, Derek. Pitch to me, is there anything going right with Star Wars right now? Any glimmer of hope? Okay, so there's there's no hope. No, there's there's a small glimmer. There's Maybe a always a new hope in Star Wars. There. Uh, there's always in, in Star Wars. <laughs> uh, so the news came out that uh, James Mangold uh, has, a, has a writer, you know. Um, they all have writers, you know, of course. They all have writers. I can't, the I can't wait for Dial of Destiny in space, Derek. I can't right. wait. <laughs> <laughs> Please give me that. Please well, put me all the bridge as the lead guy, character. I'll give you I'll give him <laughs> this. They found a good writer, the uh showrunner for House of Cards first four seasons, and right, the right. writer of the Narkina Five arc in Andor is the writer for James Mangold's film. So that's good news. But will he ever write it? Will this thing ever come together? You saw the list of all the untitled, maybe, might be, could be, you know, your guess is as good as mine films that are coming out for Star Wars. So who knows? Okay, but they like, they like doing this. Lucasfilm likes making announcements. They like saying, hey, look what we've got. Hey, we're about to drop this movie. And then that's it. And your guess is as good as mine, whether or not that project actually comes to fruition. All right, Eric, we got if the uh, James Mangold releases another movie under Lucasfilm. It's only proof that Kathleen Kennedy has not yet finished him off. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't believe that guy was talked into making that terrible Dial of Destiny film, but he, he put his name on it, so that's My on gosh. him. That's on him. I, I liked his work before, but that's on him. He did that hey, to himself. That, um, that Wolverine movie was fantastic. I love uh, the Logan. Ferrari movie was great. Yeah. Ford versus Ferrari, Walk the Line, great films. Like this. Like what happened, James Mangold? But stepped you know, into again, a, stepped into a pit of villainy and toxicity over there. Kathleen and, Kennedy yeah. happened. She's happened to a lot of people. <laughs> but if you look at it, if you look at this situation, we have another writer for the Ray movie. And he's pushed this project all the way on the back burner. All right. I don't think it can get Stephen back Knight. any further. Yeah. yeah, he's like, hey, I got uh, Peaky Blinders to work on. I'm focusing on my stuff. I'm not worried you, about you right can now. Can you Catherine imagine Kennedy. a world, Derek? Can you believe we live in a world where a writer, where yes. we say it with a straight face that there's a writer out there who's like, hey, I get, I, listen, I'll get to your Star Wars movie in a minute. I got Peaky Blinders to go first, man. This is where, <laughs> this is how bad this franchise has been destroyed. You are talking about the number one film franchise in film history. In, and in less than a decade, okay, in less than a decade, pro, it has been driven to the bottom of the ocean, okay? No one cares about this franchise. They've chased away the legacy fans. They haven't brought in enough new fans to replace the legacy fans. So what do you have on your hands right now, Lucasfilm? You have a franchise that should be able to print money for you. You know, Disney likes to go out there and brag, oh, look at all the money that we've made off of Star Wars. Well, how much money have you spent trying to make that money? You know, you haven't broken even. In fact, you probably lost money in this entire endeavor. And it's all because you will not fire this woman. I don't understand how she keeps her job. OK, the, the book, the tell all book that Kathleen Kennedy could probably write about, you know, hey, you know, the reason I'm not fired is because of all the juicy details that I'm holding on to and I'm keeping in my back pocket as the get out of jail free card. That's how Kathleen is able to keep her job because she's ran the biggest film franchise into the dirt time and time again, and it's not getting any better. So I don't know what's going to happen with the Ray film, the Mando and Grogu movie. I have, a, I have some confidence that that's coming out. I have a lot of doubts about that Ray movie with Charmino Bay Chinoy at the helm. Maybe they get rid of her. Maybe they decide, well, we've gone into a different direction with a different director. Maybe that's the way they can spin this thing because 
that thing is DOA, okay? The moment that that film drops dead on arrival, no one's going to go and check this thing out. You know, they already didn't like the character. You know, the idea of putting Charmaine Obey Chinoy, a documentarian, in charge of a Star Wars film, it just doesn't make any sense from that standpoint. So, yeah, I mean, this is where we are. This is where we are with Lucasfilm, one of the biggest film franchises, co uh, uh, pro, in the 80s, okay? Lucasfilm was Star Wars and Indiana Jones. They owned Hollywood, okay? Those films were the preeminent films of our youth growing up. And, you know, you thought when Disney took it over, yeah, we'll go ahead and turn this into something special. Nope, they couldn't do it. They couldn't do it. And they won't fire this woman. I just don't understand it. Derek, the I'm not going to say which uh, teams come to mind here. I could. I'm not going to because I don't want to offend the fans out there of these teams. But, you know, the worst mm -hmm. teams in any sport, when you go up to them and you say, oh, man, this is awful. How can you possibly go 0-16 right now? They yeah. say, well, we're not Lucasfilm. And it's a deafening, you know, it's the perfect response because they're not. Uh, yeah. Let me put you in the hot seat, Derek. Hot seat is, mm -hmm. and you, you might hate, you might say, I'll never go on this guy's channel again for asking this question, but <laughs> which, which one's never. worse? Which one's worse? Uh, the current state of Star Wars or the current state of Kurtzman Star Trek? Ooh. Uh, <laughs> I think so. <laughs> That's a rough one. That is a tough one right there. Um, just based on where Star Wars was, I'm going to say Star Wars. I know uh, it's, it's, a bigger it's, it's debatable. It's, it's a bigger it's, fall. It, you, could flip, yeah. you could flip a coin, really, and you won't be wrong. But I think just, again, based on how, again, I go back to Star Wars, The Force Awakens. It set a domestic box office record that may never fall. That's how big Star Wars was back in 2015. The Almost a billion waiting, dollars yeah. domestically. People could not wait to watch The Force Awakens and get Han, Luke, and Leia back in a film to get. Everybody was excited. The entire world could not wait for this moment. And they got it. And, and people went to the theaters, okay, just based on the pure anticipation of seeing these three characters back in Star Wars. And what happened? What did what what has happened in less than a decade? In less than a decade, they have absolutely burned that entire franchise to the ground. And I just I'll never understand the decisions that were made. I don't think anybody will. But at the end of the day, this is where we're at. Uh, so, yeah, I, I go with Star Wars on that. But like I said, you, you know, depending on the day, you know, you could probably pip, flip a coin. And, you know, if it's Star Trek, yep, that's that sounds about right, too. You know, the, the sequel trilogy is like is like buying the Justice League. And oh. you decide to not put Batman, Superman and Wonder Woman on the sc same Who screen at the same this? time. How do you make this decision to not get Han, Luke and Leia back on screen just once? Just once, let them go on one final adventure and then, okay, hand it over to the new characters. That's fine, you know? I mean, at the very least, you could say Ghostbusters. I know you didn't like Ghostbusters, but at least you could say they at least got those core characters back for Afterlife. Even the ghost of Egon came back at least one last time, one last hurrah before we hand this franchise over. That's smart. These guys over at Lucasfilm, they couldn't do the, the just paint by numbers. Come on, guys. The, the I, it, difference, I, it, Derek, in the... The, the, the difference in the Ghostbusters thing, and, and I am a huge Ghostbusters fan. Yes, I, think I know you are. I, I think the original is the greatest intellectual comedy of all time. Dry comedy. Yep. I, there's none better. Um, the difference is that Afterlife and Frozen Empire, I don't think they're anywhere close to the original quality, right? They're, they don't even come sure. close to the original movie, nor the sequel. But that said, they don't disparage and denigrate and desecrate yes. the original characters. They lovingly treat the original characters. Right. And for that reason, if there's a third Ghostbusters movie, I will excitedly go back to the theater in hopes. I mean, just, right. just absolutely hoping that they bring the magic back because it's magic. That first movie and even the sequel, right? The yeah. sequel by itself would be an amazing movie. It's just when it's compared to the original. It's yeah, hard to see, yeah. but but the, the first movie is like, it's it's one of the greatest movies of all time. It is magic. And, and it's uh, the same thing with Star Wars. The original trilogy yes. is magic. 
And so when you have magic in your hands and you have an opportunity to maybe not recreate the same magical experience that audiences enjoyed years and years ago, but at least to give them a taste of it, you know, just give us a little bit of that magic back, just a tiny piece of it, you know, and you blow that opportunity like Lucasfilm did. I, I, it's it's unforgivable. It's unforgivable. And I don't think anybody, I, I think they lost fans for good with how they treated Han, Luke, and Leia in the sequel trilogy. They lost fans for good. And like I said, they mm-hmm. never replaced those fans. If you replace those fans, maybe you can, you know, justify the changes and the things that you decided to do. They didn't replace those guys. And they, they just left the franchise, you know, out to dry at, the, at that point. So they, they topped it off with the way they treated Gina and the way they yeah. destroyed oh, the Mandalorian man, story and all that. So that, you know, we yeah. can do another video on that, but we, we cannot. <laughs> uh, but uh, Derek, I want to say that your channel has absolutely exploded. I knew it would. People are discovering you now in droves. And Derek, tell the folks out there what it is you're doing on your slice of YouTube and why they should come check you out. Well, every Saturday we jump into the DA's office as a live stream. We have 8 p.m. Eastern, uh, 5 p.m. Pacific, you know, me and my friend T. And we just talk about Hollywood. We talk about the different topics that are out there. And, you know, we're going to try to start bringing on more guests, you know, because we want to just start to expand. But uh, every day I'm dropping videos about uh, the world of entertainment, what's happening. So check me out on Derek Anderson, the DA. Um, you know, you can find me out there, just crossed 10,000, actually just crossed 11,000 subscribers. So, um, I'm moving and grooving and, uh, thanks to a lot of the potentials that are out there that have helped me out. Uh, memberships are coming soon folks. So for any of you that are looking forward to, uh, helping me out, supporting me with memberships, those are coming soon. And look, I'm enjoying all of this. Okay. This is a blast. I'm having a great time. Thanks to guys like WDW pro and Valiant Renegade and the, uh, echo base network for supporting me. Yeah, you guys are the best, man. And uh, yeah, I'm just having a blast, man. This is fun. This is awesome stuff. Can't wait to ge- keep going with it. Well, I hope people will go subscribe to your channel. I hope they'll go check out Echo Base Network, which is where I yep. discovered you and immediately said, oh my gosh. Um, and, and Derek, <laughs> I know I'm, I'm going to be seeing you on some of the biggest channels out there in the near future. And uh, apologies, by the way, Derek, I interrupted you during the video today. Unintentional. You were on a magnificent path. And I, I apologize for uh, hopping in there. Sometimes there's a delay. And I think we had one of those delays that was, you know, uh, 0. 0.2, 0. 0.3, 0. 0.5 seconds. And it threw that off. And I just hate that because I was loving hearing where you were going. But I hope we still did a, uh, well, an above average conversation nevertheless. So, Derek, thank you for being here. Folks, if you enjoyed this conversation, consider clicking the like button, share, subscribe, click it, stick it to the algorithms. It's the notification bell and drop a comment down below. Don't forget, folks, that tomorrow, if you're watching this video on the day of release, we have the Pro Show Live, and it is going to be different than most Pro Shows, well, any Pro Show you've seen thus far. We are currently planning to have Mark Kern. He goes by Grums. If you had a Mount Rushmore of important video game individuals, he's on it. Uh, He was the team lead for the original World of Warcraft. He was a major part of StarCraft. He's going to be on, we're talking DEI and China, the connections, how it's destroying gaming and what we can do to save it. It's one of the most anticipated conversations I have ever had on the channel. Uh, I don't know if it will be as good as when I had the chance to sit down with Valerie Stewart and talk about Splash Mountain and Song of the South, but I cannot wait to dive in. Folks, we hope you're there. All right, folks, wherever you are and whatever you're doing, keep learning, keep growing, and as always, keep having fun. (laughs) What? (laughs) What? I I just, uh, I put out a tweet of a fat minority with a booger in her nose, and I said, this is an empowered woman. (laughs) And Kataka retweeted it. (laughs) <laughs> uh, you don't have your own X account, do you? Oh, well, I actually created it a while ago. The greatest troll I've pulled off in a long time. Do you know how many things uh, I've secretly tanked? Oh, gosh, I hope not. That would make me legally culpable. But, uh, what are you talking about? <laughs> Sweet baby ink. <laughs> huh? Yep. I'm the... <laughs> Shut up. I'm the CEO. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, no, seriously, look, this is my profile picture. <laughs> Everyone's just AI. It's great. I'm so excited to gaslight everyone and see what they're going to like next because they think it's socially obligated. <laughs> Wait. So you're... No way. You're yep. the CEO of Sweet Baby Inc. Maybe. But first, you should see the jewelry company I created. <laughs> We're gonna get sued. <laughs> oh. It's a no, yeah, it's gonna be good. <laughs>